So even though there's been rampant election fraud this primary season, there have been few media outlets that actually wanted to discuss it in detail. So for those of you who have been screaming about election fraud, you should now feel vindicated because the Institute for American Democracy and Election Integrity, a nonprofit organization, will be filing a racketeering lawsuit over election fraud. So they explain the integrity of this November's election may be of serious concern. Here in the United States, all of our votes are counted by private corporations with proprietary software which they do not want people to examine if there is a problem with the election. These problems could include unwarranted purging of voters, apparent flipping of votes, disappearing of a candidate while voting and disappearing of votes, an examination of Skytel and So and ES and S, two vote counting companies, shows many negative reviews regarding their management of elections. Now the primary bit of evidence that they're using is the exit polls. Now it's very common for exit polls, like all polls, to be inaccurate. But the problem is that there are many exit polls this cycle that are outside of the margin of error. Now, anytime they are plus or minus more than two percentage points outside of the margin of error, that is cause for concern. And the fact that this occurred numerous times is very worrying. Now, what's even more suspicious is that once people started to realize the inaccuracy of the exit polls, well, they just canceled exit polls in some states. So they write, concern has been expressed that the exit polls of the Democratic primaries for this year, when compared to electronic voting machine totals, seem to show a pattern that might suggest that the electronic vote totals in 11 states may have shifted votes from Sanders to Clinton. In contrast to other nations, exit polls used currently by the federal government to assess election fraud in other countries are adjusted continuously on election day to match electronic voting machine totals, rather than to determine whether the electronic vote is accurate. Now, according to Stephen Spoonamore, who is a cybersecurity expert, uh, when exit poll data varies more than 2% from electronic vote totals, the electronic vote totals are questionable. In fact, 2% is used as the boundary by the U.S. government when determining that the election in another country other than the U.S. has possibly been stolen. Please note, the exit poll differences up above are more than 2%. These differences point to questionable results for the electronic vote totals. Now, for example, as you see here, discrepancies in favor of Clinton, in some cases you have nearly 12 points, nearly 14 point discrepancies in Georgia and Alabama respectively that are in favor of Hillary Clinton. Now you can see these at trustvote.org. Now the overall goal of the lawsuit is to compel states to actually release exit polls and they also wanna audit the election results. So here's a video of one of the lawyers explaining their goal. And we will be going into court with a demand to inspect the ballots. We will digitally photograph the ballots and then we will have ballots, we can count them, we can do it publicly, everybody can observe or participate. You wanna recount them yourself to check it? We'll have them. The, the, the fix is on, they've done it, they've done it, they've stolen again, 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 again. They're serial uh, uh, vote thieves. And we've got the evidence. We've got the know-how, we've got the experts, we've got the mechanism of courts that understand the problem, and we're going after it. Now, in total, there are three lawyers involved. So there is Bob Fitrakis, Cliff Arnenbeck, and Lori Grace. And these individuals also battled against election fraud in 2012 and shined a light on the Republicans who tried to hack precincts in Ohio. Now, they contend that typically when we see really fishy results, it usually favors Republicans, uh, which they call the red shift. But now we are seeing these results favor Hillary Clinton. Now, the voting machines that we use that are owned by private corporations are easily hackable. If you watch Debbie, the same progressive, then she's been talking about this for months. Now, since these voting machines are easily hackable, there are many European countries that have banned them. So Newsweek explains, after almost two years of deliberations, Germany's Supreme Court ruled in March that e-voting was unconstitutional because the average citizen could not be expected to understand the exact steps involved in the recording and tallying of votes. Political scientist Joachim Weisner and his son Ulrich, a physicist, filed the initial lawsuit and have been instrumental in raising public awareness of the insecurity of electronic voting. The Dutch public interest group, We Do Not Trust Voting Machines, produced a video showing how quickly the NetApp machines could be hacked without voters or election officials being aware. The answer was five minutes. 
Now, after the clip was broadcasted on national television in October of 2006, the Netherlands banned all electronic voting machines, and we should have done the same. So, in 2008, there were reports in certain precincts that when you voted for Obama, your vote flipped to McCain. And in 2012, well, it was supposed to be the case that certain precincts in Ohio would flip to Romney when you voted for Obama. But the lawyers who uh, shined a spotlight on that explained what happened. And, and election night, the FBI was in the Secretary of State's office. Hmm. All right, the FBI probably also had wiretaps. 2012? 2012. All right, so on election night, Carl Rove is on Fox News. Hmm. They call the election in Ohio for Obama. And Carl Rove says, wait a minute, all the votes aren't in yet. Right. You're, it's premature. Mm -hmm. And he basically goes into a fight with, with the Fox News people. Mm -hmm. And their experts come out and say, no, Carl, we looked at it, the numbers. Are there. And here's what's the real story. Mm -hmm. And it's written up in Washington Spectator that, that no one told Carl that the fix was off because the scrutiny was on. Now, the lawyers have yet to release all of the information related to the case, and they probably can't because the lawsuit is pending. But the real question is, will this actually make a difference? And the problem is that even if they really do have the evidence on their side like they contend, well, they probably don't have time on their side because the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia will be occurring at the end of July. That is a little over a month away. So even if somehow this goes through... Uh, time's running out. Now, the thing that's complex and that makes rampant election fraud possible is because if you see something that's suspicious, well, you have to investigate it and file a lawsuit in that particular state. So if you see one precinct that looks really fishy, well, unless you want to file a lawsuit in that state, then you're going to have a difficult time doing anything about it. So if you see precincts everywhere popping up with different cases of election fraud, Again, it's really difficult to do anything. So these guys are really doing a public service by dedicating their time to prevent election fraud from occurring. So, but even if it's the case that it's too late and the lawsuit won't matter in the grand scheme of things, the best thing that we can do is still spread this information because people need to know about it. It's not conspiratorial to talk about election fraud. It's happening and there are reasons why European countries do not allow these types of voting machines that are easily hackable in their countries. It's because they're easily hackable, and in fact, they're more hackable than mobile phones. That's pretty scary. The lawyers aren't necessarily contending that Clinton is behind all of this, but many of the shifts that they're seeing are directly benefiting her and hurting Bernie Sanders. So in the end, there's a lot of questions that are still out there. Hopefully, we'll find out soon once the evidence is released. But in the end, I don't necessarily know that we will have time for this to make a difference. And if so, that's really sad.